Hey there, Michael Griffiths here, founder of Referral Marketing Guru, and welcome to this week's Get More Referrals Today podcast. Whether you are watching this on one of our social platforms or on YouTube, listening to us on iTunes, Apple Play, Spotify, can't wait to get through today's topic. And it's all about your ideal client. But not how do you find your ideal client, not what is your ideal client, but why you need to be really specific with your ideal client and then plaster that everywhere so that your referral partners know, so your ideal clients know, so your current clients know, and just as importantly, so your prospects know beforehand whether they are a fit for you or not. See, there's many reasons why we're afraid to be able to say, this is our ideal client. This is the person we want to work with. And everyone else, sorry, you're just not a fit. And it comes from our scarcity mindset. It comes from what happens if our ideal client doesn't want to work with us. What happens if there is none of our ideal client? What happens if that means I don't make as much money? What happens if I don't keep a roof over my head, food on the table? And our brain goes on and on and on of all the problems that could exist. But there's one empowering thing when we get our ideal client right. And when I go right, not just right from this is who it is, but right from the perspective of I am confident to spread this to the world of these are our people. These are the people we work with and no one else. And the thing that happens when you do that, you have more fun in business you actually start working with the people you want to work with. So I'm going to get through here and get you to start working on who's your ideal client? Who's the exact person that you want to every single day get up and help? Because to me, as soon as you stray from that, as soon as you veer off that path, business becomes much harder. Business is definitely not as much enjoyable. And then all of a sudden, things become more annoying to you than what they should. So let's dive into this. So why does this even matter? Why should you even think about what your ideal client needs to be? And most people will go, oh, my ideal client is a plumber, is an electrician, is an accountant, is a business coach, is a life coach, is a brick and mortar business, right? That's not an ideal client. That's just a industry. That might be your niche. Ideal client looks at so much more. And we're going to get into the sorts of things you need to think about to actually get your ideal client, to actually be going, this is the persona of my ideal client. And I said, why do we even need that? Well, the first thing is, when you try to work with everybody, that scarcity mindset ensures that you get nobody. And more often than not, the people you do get are not the right people. And therefore, it drains you. It sucks you the energy out of you. It's nowhere near as much fun. I can guarantee now, if you look at the difference between your best client, the client you absolutely love, and the client that you just can't stand getting on a call with, there's a big difference in how you show up. There's a big difference leading up to it. There's a big difference in the amount of time, energy, worry you put into it. Why? Why would you want that in your business if it doesn't need to be? So it's this scarcity mindset of going, oh, well, maybe there won't be enough of these people. Or maybe it's not even scarcity mindset. Maybe it becomes greediness mindset. But in the end, it has a huge detrimental effect on your business especially businesses and service providers that bring their clients together, that have a a tribe mentality. Because the people who are in there want to be around other people like them. And if you don't have your ideal clients constantly coming in and you go, oh, it doesn't matter if I let this person or I take this person on or I do things with this person, it affects the whole dynamics of your business. Food for thought. So what are the mistakes that I'm seeing when people try to get their ideal client? Well, the first big mistake is they go, my ideal client is a 30-year-old professional service 
that works in financials. And that's not terrible, but it's so broad. It doesn't actually give the specifics of who your ideal client is. The other mistake tends to be, oh, I could do things with them, or it doesn't matter if I do things with them, or maybe I can do things with them. And we start just allowing everybody. You may as well not have an ideal client. When you get this right, and you put this on your website, you put this in your marketing, you put this in your email signatures, you have this when you do sales presentations, when you have conversations with people. And we've got this everywhere. It sits with what makes us remarkable. So we have two things. You can see this on our website, michaelgriffiths.com.au. It sits there on that front page. These are the things that make us remarkable. And our ideal client is a service provider that wants, and there's two, four, six dot points. And it's really clear. So if the service provider doesn't want those things, that's fine. We're not working together. We're not the fit. There's plenty of other people who will help you. It's just not me. Because when we know that we get, that service provider that wants the dot points that we have, the magic that's created and the growth, the profitability, the impact, all of the things that we're about go through the roof. The results we, we get for that person are tenfold. That's why we have 10 times return on investment guarantee because we're really clear on our type of person. And that's all we're going to work with. So you could quite easily be listening right now going, well, I've only got two, three, four, five clients. I don't really need anyone. The reason why you've only got two, three, four, five clients is because of this fact. I'm going to share something really important right now. The easiest way to grow your business is through your current clients being overexcited Labrador puppies going and telling everybody else about how remarkable you are. The reason why that doesn't happen is because A, you haven't thought about what makes you remarkable. You just think doing a good job is good enough. And B, you're not bringing in your ideal people. So part of our ideal people is they do become overexcited Labrador puppies. They will go and sneeze on everybody else how great we are. You've probably heard, put your clients into A clients, B clients, C clients, D clients. You should always be weeding out your C and D clients. Well, to me, your A clients are probably a whole different level than what, they are for you. For me, our A clients are people who turn up, do what they say, their payments are made on time, but they go and tell other people about us. They bring other people, other great people like them into our world. They are our A clients. See, for most people, their A clients are simply, they do what you want them to do. Well, that's fine, but you're missing a really vital piece that the fastest way to grow your business is through your current clients. So when you get this right and you have your ideal clients and you're crystal clear on the people that you want bought in, you're already setting the expectation with these people that if they're going to work with you, if they're going to use your business, that there's things that are going to take place. Now, this doesn't matter if you're a, a tradie, you're a financial in the financial services business, you're some sort of coach or consultant. If you have some service-orientated business, then you need to be clear 
on who that ideal client is. So let me run through us. So we're really clear and we've got this. I'm just going to read straight from the, the piece of paper that's in front of me. Our ideal client is a service provider that wants to be held accountable to higher standards than everyone else. Be told bluntly when things are crap, but given solutions to fix it. Thrive on setting targets and smashing them out of their park with their numbers. Have a remarkable business that creates overexcited Labrador puppies. Get paid a profit dividend from their business every quarter, not just wages or director fees. Contribute to societies, to charities, to foundations and make a larger impact are willing to go and tell all the service providers that they know who are like them how great and remarkable we are. Pretty simple. So if someone reads that and says, oh, I really don't care about getting paid profit dividends, or I don't really care about having a remarkable business, or I really don't care about contributing to society, that's fine. We're just not a fit. Because those things are what's important to our people and what's important to us and what we integrate into being able to get more referrals, into being able to integrate using your networks and creating partnerships by getting clients to want to be able to pass you business. See, all of those things go hand in hand. Honestly, what most people have got no clue about in terms of being able to get referrals is that you need to be remarkable. You need to be able to educate, nurture, be front of mind, create magical client experiences. You need to be able to have great conversations, use your social platforms, use offline. There's so much that you can do that 99% of people have got no concept of because I think it's as simple as do a good job and the masses will come. Fortunately, it's not good enough in today's world. It was good enough 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Without a doubt, that was good enough. But society has changed so much. Technology has changed. We are all so closer than before. It is so easy to be able to have someone go, you know what, that wasn't a great experience. And now a thousand people know within a minute. Those things are important. And you need to be thinking about those things. So when you look at, let's look at your ideal client. Notice how our ideal client, it really just said, is a service provider. I don't need to go into age, demographic, type. It's more so about the attributes, the qualities, and what they want. And if they don't want the same sorts of things that we deliver, then they're not our ideal client. So who's your ideal client? When I ask people all the time, who do you work with? It is so vague that no wonder business is hard. And as I said, the majority of the time, that mentality comes simply from scarcity. I won't get enough clients. Their mind is in this doubting sort of, I go four levels of thinking in terms of around business growth and personal growth, and they're down in level one, where it's still about survival. And they're in survival mode. If you're in survival mode, you're not in business mode, you can't grow your business, you're more focused inner on yourself. When you start saying, no, sorry, you're not the ideal fit, the empowering, the confidence that you get, how that helps your own inner game will bring the right sorts of people to you. Hey, hopefully it's been helpful. I'd love your insights. If you're listening to this, make sure you subscribe either on iTunes, on Spotify, on Google Play, on Podbean. Never miss an episode of our Get More Referral Today podcast. If you're watching this, whether it be on YouTube, Instagram TV, Facebook, or LinkedIn, make sure you connect. 
follow, whatever the terminology is on that platform, so you never miss an episode of our Get More Referrals Today podcast. If you're not part of our Million Dollar Referral Network, our free Facebook group, make sure you jump over to Facebook, search the Million Dollar Referral Network, or look for the link in the show notes. Get your ideal client. Be really clear. Tell the world. Now your referral partners know who your ideal client is. Now your current clients know who their who your ideal client is. It might even smarten some of them up. And if not, remove them. Now your networks know who your ideal client is. So it's really important to not only do this, but to make sure everyone's aware so that you get the right sorts of people. Okay, guys, that's it from me. Have an amazing week. Till next time. I'll talk to you real soon. See you later, all.